Yeah. What's up, everybody? This is James Frame at the Recording Connection. Thank you for joining me with the Google Hang with the Hangout. Sorry, you get it. This is <laughs> this is James Frame at the Recording Connection. Thank you for joining the Hangout, guys. Uh, today we're to go over sound design um, and also um, synth design a little bit, but mainly we're doing this for film. We're doing this for video games. Um, and I'm just going to show you some tricks. We'll go over Foley. We'll go over which sound banks to use and which uh, synths to use in order to get uh, a proper sound. All right. Um, so first to jump into it, a lot of you guys have asked about Foley. Um, Foley is the act of replacing sounds with found sounds. Um, you can do this with sample packs, which we'll get into in a little bit. But I'm going to give you guys like an introduction into how to do it um, with stuff you have at home, like fruit, uh, tomatoes, carrots, all that stuff. Um, carrots and tomatoes are really good to use for brain sounds, blood sounds, bones cracking, um, even trees cracking. Just it has to make sense. So when you place it with the actual film, it needs to make sense. If it doesn't make sense, just delete it and find something else. Really not that hard, all right? Uh, so, what I'm going to do is we're just going to go into Ableton. We'll record a little bit here with stuff that I've brought from my house. First, we'll start with carrots. Um, with carrots, you're going to want to be a little careful on to make sure that it doesn't peak. If it peaks, not that big of a deal, but um, it's just best for it not to peak. So come over. Get some carrots. Unfortunately, these are not the firmest of carrots. If you are going to do this correctly, use firm carrots, but these are old carrots. Nice and bendy. Still get some sound out of it, though. All right. So go into your DAW, whatever it is. If you want Pro Tools, if you want Ableton, even you guys that use um, SoundForge, whatever you want to use. Go in there, just hit record, and just start playing with stuff. It's really, really simple. So got that peaking a little bit, no big deal. That one's perfect. Close. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and repitch these. That. That's what you want. That sounds like someone's arm breaking right there. You pitch it down a little bit, and you see their arm breaking. It's gonna make sense to people. All right. Also, another one you want to use is the tomato. Come over here, do a little squish. Nice, gross sounds. Sounds like you're stepping on someone's brain, all that stuff. Let's do a little bit more. And right there, that signal that I'm looking at right now is pretty, pretty close. And then, now that you have all that disgustingness in the bowl, you can start playing around with it. Just make sure not to get it shot on your computer screen like I just did. And what else we got here? Oh, banana. So before I wipe my hands, we'll just let it stay nasty the way it is. Um, Bananas are good for ripping skin, um, also for um, people walking through leaves, all that stuff. So you come here, I'm good. Fat, bring your banana out that's nice and ripe. It's good sounds like that. Cool. I was going to do a tangerine also. That's good, again, for brains, but I think it's going to shoot all over this computer. It's not my computer, so I don't want my <laughs> co-worker to get upset. All right. Cool. So we got all that. Um, just make sure that you're nice and close uh, to the 
nice and close to the microphone so you get a good proper signal. Uh, try to make sure it's not peaking. If it's a low signal, you can just in Ableton go and actually boost the um, boost the signal internally with the sample. I'll show you how to do that in a second. And just get this nastiness all put away here. So right now we're going to switch over screens and I'm going to show you how to start editing this stuff. All right. So now we're going to go in and actually find the sounds that we want to use and uh, edit those. Put them in a file and start saving them. You're going to build a sound bank with all these. Everything that you do with Foley, just put it in an individual folder and start organizing it. Um, it's really good because when you start using other sample packs, this is going to be your unique sound that you can use because you made them. So now let's go through and edit them. So this one, you go through, just cut it, get rid of the other stuff. We're going to go in and actually boost the signal in this. Uh, Coming right here, get a little fatter, a little wider. And luckily, we have nothing that peaks. And we're going to want to crop that sample so it's an individual sample itself. Excellent. And right now, you can hear a lot of air. Um, that's just because it's a low signal, so you go in cut out the little air parts. Now you have those little, little perfect rips right there. All right, and again, just go and crop that sample. Um, you want them to be as organized as possible. In sound design, half your job is being organized. Cool, so right there we have all of the, the mushing of the tomato. So Command E, we'll separate those. And then again, come in here, crop that sample, get rid of the other junk, which is probably me just talking. Uh, and we'll boost that signal up right here. Cool. What we can also do is if you hear a lot of air in that, we'll go in and EQ it. But right now, we're just getting the sounds organized, all right? Um, so we got that. Come in here. Again, we have more sounds. We just have tons and tons of that mushing sound. We really like that. So we'll get rid of everything else that has too high of a signal. Come over here. Excellent. Just keep repeat repeating the process. Crop the sample again. Boost the signal up. Perfect. If you want to take that one step further, we could start adding delays and reverb to it. Uh, but right now, we just want the source signal as it is. Perfect. Cool. So we'll get rid of that. Uh, and of course, we still need that carrot sound. I think there was one we really liked in there. That was it. That's perfect. And it does peak. Um, but in this case, we're going to be fine with that because it doesn't affect the signal. We're not hearing any distortion. It's just a quick crack. Um, you know, when I've been teaching you guys with composition, you know, peaking is the end all. It's your worst enemy. But in this case, not that big of a deal um, because there's no distortion. So we can still use it. All right. Perfect. Now, if we want to, we can go in, crop that sample once again. Get it like that. And now we can start stretching it apart even, making it shorter or longer. So now we have that little digital snap there. It's a little, little rip. And you have this that makes it shorter, the two and the plus two. Keep cranking it out if you want. Now it's starting to get the sound that we want, like bones breaking right there. And of course, you can come over, transpose it a little bit. Now you got like a gunshot if you want. It's just endless. Um, one thing we also, also should go over is how this is affected. So if you want to keep the total sound together, go to complex. Complex will keep it a little more true to its form and get odd sounds out of that. Sounds like a robot sound. Come over here, we can go to repitch. Um, kind of endless so with this one sound that we got all of this was carrots breaking we could go from cars getting in a car wreck 
bones breaking, gunshots, all this stuff simply from us breaking a couple carrots. And that costs you at most about 10 cents. So for 10 cents, you just got a ton of sounds. And of course your brain sounds over here. Um, with this, again, if you just wanna play with the texture of it, transpose it, you can get a ton of sounds out of that also. All right, come down here, transpose that. So that could be a robot talking. I mean, really, it's up to you. However you want to use these, use them. Um, just start recording sounds, playing with them, and then bouncing them out. It's really, really that easy. All right, so that is Foley for you. Just go through your house, get your, you can use your iPhone, you can use an iPad, you can use a DAT recorder, whatever you want to use. Just go around your house, start recording stuff. Doors opening, uh, on your cars, in your house, cabinets, um, you know, your toilet flushing, having, um, you know, your sink running, all this stuff. Just start making a catalog of these that are your sounds, manipulate them, and then bounce them out as an audio file and just keep track of them. Make sure to label them. Labeling is super important or else you'll just have a bunch of audio files that don't make any sense and you don't want that. So now, after you have these, we're going to get into uh, sample packs. In Hollywood, they've stopped using uh, Foley on low budget films. We now have sample packs that have replaced the need for Foley artists. On bigger budget stuff that you know is, is multi-million dollar, they're going to still use Foley artists in combination with these sample packs. So one resource for this, and it is a bit pricey, I mean I apologize. Um, I apologize you know, in the beginning for this, but if you can find free sounds, go for it. But the one that I like to use is called Hollywood Edge. Um, it's kind of, it's the go-to in Hollywood. So, um, again, I always spell it wrong. <coughs> Boom. So if you're in a crunch to get a project done, come here, it's endless. You have alien sounds, you have planet, alien planet sounds, um, you have drone sounds, anything you want is on here. They're a little pricey, but totally worth the investment if you actually start getting jobs in this. Um, another resource is of course, just go to Google and type in free sounds and tons of stuff will pop up, free sound effects. So you got, you know, freesound.org, soundbible.com, freesfx.co, all really good resources. It's just they're not gonna be as good as the stuff that is on a Hollywood Edge or anything that you pay for because they're free. You know, it's just people recording them um, and then throwing them online without editing them at all. Cool. So. Now that you know where to get them, we're gonna jump into my sample pack and go over how to use these, all right? So right now, right up here, we have the new Hunger Game video. No sound, um, I've just muted out the sound in this. Um, and we're gonna start rep replacing the sounds uh, to get some practice, but also to build a portfolio, what you can do is download trailers and then redo the sound. So when you go to um, go to a studio or anyone that's making movies, you have a portfolio that, you know, it's not necessarily yours, but it still shows your skill. Um, so if you guys are interested in doing this as a career, I'd recommend at least doing one a week. Uh, replacing the sounds, putting your name on that, that's the best way to make a portfolio. All right, now to give you an idea uh, of the sound effects. Um, also guys, uh, you can ask questions, save them to the end. Uh, I'll get to them and answer all of them for you, but just write down your questions and I'll get around to them, all right? Um, but awesome. All right, so we're getting to the Hollywood Edge. I already have it, already bought it, killer stuff. And as you can see, what we were talking about, the organization, it's already organized for you. It's amazing. <laughs> so you come in here um, and let's pick out one scene. So let's say, right there we have a crowd so what I would do is I'd come up here add a locator say crowd and put it right there 
That actually looks like that was lying to us. There's the crowd. We want the crowd right there. Come to Hollywood Edge, go through our stuff. And what do we see? Crowds, kids, babies, perfect. We know with Hunger Games, it's just people kind of murmuring a little bit and walking, so we're gonna look for something like that, right? <laughs> Definitely not laughing. They're all sad. Sad people, they're gonna die. People in shock, quiet, interior. Oof. <laughs> so we're not gonna find that group in here, that's for sure. This is way too happy, no big deal. Uh, we'll go find some shoes of people walking just to get that going. Um, it's whatever makes sense. And if you wanted to, um, you could change the, the mood of the trailer by adding in that effect. But you know with Hunger Games, the attitude is mundane, it's gray. So none of that's going to really work for us, all right? Um, so now let's find people walking, if we can, here. Oh, nature ambience, of course. So we'll do come in here. Oh, yeah. And with this, we do remember that there's... Uh, animals in the background. People are growing animals and all that stuff. So what we can do is bring in some stuff that actually has uh, perfect right there. So that I know we're going to use simply because they're out in the woods. So we'll find that clip where they're out in the woods here. And this is literally sound design and doing sound for video games and film. It's just finding the right sample. That's all it is. So we'll come over here, boom, pop it in. Cool, so you saw that. So this right here, we see that they're out in the woods. They're gonna have them shooting, so we need to find an arrow sound, him throwing a rock. And then also up here, it's where you find the helicopter because that's coming up. So we'll wait for it. Awesome, so you come in here, find a helicopter, and this is where your sound design skill is gonna need to come in a little bit, um, because it's a spaceship. So you want it to kind of give the sense that it's hovering, so it's gonna be a helicopter, but you also want it to have kind of like a sci-fi type thing. All right, so we'll go, let's say aircraft modern, right? Boom, boom, long approach. Perfect. Come up here, just drop it in. We'll throw that one, yeah, up there. So now we're just gonna add it in. Uh oh, there it is. We want a little more present. So this right there is a little too much, right? So you come in here, chop it up. And that's the effect we're going for. Just loud, in your face, and intense. Perfect. All right. Now that you have that in there, you just go in and you start adding automation to it. All right, so track the volume, come in there. And you're just gonna have it so it tracks up right when you see that key scene. Um, in Ableton, it's wonderful because it's super easy. Go chop it up. Cool. And the last thing that you'd wanna do to this is simply add panning so that you saw that it goes from They're looking up. 
and it's at the right, so you'd want to pan it so it starts at the right um, signal and comes more to the center so it's right above them. And again, you're just going to automate that part too. Um, one thing that you could see that's probably coming apparent is this, this takes a long time, and it does, but it's totally worth it in the end. Um, if you spend, I'd say on a trailer, up to mm, five to six hours, you've got a good start. Um, but people that do this professionally spend a lot of time making this sound just right. Cool. Cool. So that would be the first scene right there. Not even completed. We still needed five sounds. So every sound that you see, literally every single sound you see, a rock throwing, uh, someone shooting a... Um, an arrow, anything you see, it needs to be replaced with sound, all right? Um, and needs to be realistic. One last thing with this to go over is if it's in a room, so let's go through a scene here. Like say if it's in a room right there and you want to create an ambience. Um, the easiest way to do this in, a in Ableton would be to send your signal to a reverb. So we already have a reverb set up here. It would actually be to send your signal over to that reverb, making sure that it's being uh, affected and everything's being affected so it's in the same room. It's exactly like we talked about when you're doing your compositions, you want everything to be in the same room. Uh, exact same concept. Uh, just go in, send everything to that reverb a little bit, and you're perfect, you're good to go. So that is the sound part. As far as creating rooms and sound effects from synthesizers, easiest way to do this is to go to like Massive or Absinthe. I love Absinthe. Really any synth you want. Just going in there um, and finding a preset that sounds good and reflects the attitude of the room, all right? So that's like... That's totally cool. It could be used for a spaceship. Um, if you want to... Again, that could be a spaceship or like a, a laser being shot. One thing to keep in mind with this is be careful because you are replacing the sound and you're creating an attitude in the sound. But if you switch over and start adding synthesizers and um, musical parts, you're going to really, really uh, make the composer super, super angry. And you don't want them to interfere. You're replacing the sound. You're not creating the composition. Um, if you're doing both, on like an indie film or something that's a little smaller, go crazy, but always keep in mind that there's a composer that's gonna come in and doesn't want his masterpiece to be interfered by your masterpiece. So keep that in mind. And that is an introduction into sound for film, guys. Um, again, recommendation, go in, download some trailers, replace the sound, do one a week. Um, once you have like 15 to 20 of these, you actually have something that you can show to companies. Um, same thing with video games. You can go download trailers online of video games, replace their sounds. Again, you want 10 to 15 of those minimum um, to bring to a company. You can't just show up with one trailer that you've done and be like, hey, hire me. Um, you won't even get an interview for an internship. But if you have 10 to 15 of these, plus something that you've done independently with one of your friends, um, you'll be set, man. You'll at least be able to get an interview with that. One thing we need to go over that you guys are getting a little confused on in the video game world is the um, is the coding aspect of this. For video games, you do make the sounds, you do make the composition depending on what job you got, but in order to get ahead of the pack, you need to start jumping into a couple languages here. First one is called FMOD. Check it out right here. FMOD is the programming language that connects your sound with the objects in the video game. And it also makes it so you can do uh, easy transitions. So if you have like a composition or a sound that's like a creepy effect in one room, and then the next room is supposed to be a happy room, it'll connect that so the sad or the creepy music will be faded out as the happy music starts to be faded in. Or in this example, you have the Maserati and the Audi, when you're racing next to each other, based on how close you are, how far away you are, um, 
it will take the the rev of the engine and put it to one side or the other side or make it louder or more present. So this is a language you need to know. If you showed up to a company like Blizzard or any of the big companies, they will want you to know at least part of this so you can interact with their um, with their programmers and create your audio uh, in a way that reflects the programming also. With this, you also get Unity 3D. I know this is a lot, uh, and you're learning composition and sound design at the same time. Just go slow with this. These all have tutorials on their websites. They want you to get involved. I'd say do one a week. Um, you don't have to go crazy. You're not going to be the programmer doing this. Um, but it's just an option. And with Unity, as they said, they're hiring right now. So you might as well get a job with them. Um, but yeah, so to the get started part, go to the tutorials. This is everything that you need. It will get you started, at least started in it. And so when you show up and do an interview, people are like, well, what experience do you have? Like, I know how to do this in Unity, and I know how to do this in FMOD. And that is your foot in the door, guys. That is going to get you that interview that you all want. Um, but yeah, so that is the tutorial. That's the introduction into Gorilla fully into using sound for commercials, all that stuff. So now I'm gonna to get to answering questions with you guys. Let me go find our questions here and see what we got going on. Where are the questions? Boom, cool. We'll start at the bottom here. All right, so Kaylee, you asked about when looking for a sound design job, uh, what should we have in terms of a reel and a resume? On your resume, everything that you can list list so if it's whatever the importance of the job is so i've done stuff for um independent video games and i've also done stuff for apps so i always put the apps first because i have links on like synthtopia and actual reviews of it that are also on apple and then from there i'll go back to the less important job so the higher the job always have it first or whatever is the present job um, but make sure to highlight something that you know your employer will find important as far as your reel, uh, if you don't have anything that you've done yet that is with a uh, with like another student, um, and it's only the trailers that we were talking about earlier, that were just like the two minute trailers that you replace the sound, have at least ten to fifteen of those. Along with those ten to fifteen uh, trailers that you replace the sound with, have um, your sound banks and your samples. So you can also also show them what samples you have created yourself. And I'll give them insight to what you've done. But the minimum 10 to 15 uh, replacement sound trailers. That is the absolute minimum. All right. Move up to here to Chad. Uh, how many layers would we typically have on a given action? Okay. So if someone's like punching each other, with that, it, de it depends on the sample pack. So if the pack has really good punches, just use one. But if you want to have like a higher impact or it's a, a character like an action hero you'd want a punch and then some type of like either a tree sound or something that would animate that one sound so it doesn't sound human it depends on what the subject matter is but if it is human to human fighting just use one sample per action um, if you're gonna have like a building crashing generally you're gonna want to take four or five different sources have them all uh, being blended together through either like granular delay or some type of glitch um, and just start melding them together uh, it's up to you at what point you've achieved what you want so if it's a high impact sound and you get that impact by only two sounds then you're all good but if you if it needs to take four or five even up to 20 sounds to get that one impact what you're going for then use all of them it's super subjective but um, there's some rules to go by you know if you see it and it only needs one sound you're all good if it needs more just add more it's up to you you're the sound designer and Jonathan how do you get the video file in Ableton do I just drag and drop uh, or something else you have to do yeah it's literally you just take the the mp4 um, and you drag it in it's that easy it'll pop up as a WAV file and then you're gonna need to go into your window or your view and it will say video go down click it and it pops up for you and then we got what's the next one here Morgan thank you for that quip I guess I said people that we grow animals yeah evolution whatever 
All right, what equipment do we need to do field recording? So back in the day, this used to be, it used to matter. You used to have lots of equipment. Um, now you can just use your iPhone if you want. Use your iPhone, your iPad. Uh, I have a stereo field imager or a stereo field recorder that I go into. Um, you can buy them at Guitar Center or Sam Ash for like $100. Um, and it will actually pump it out in a WAV file or an MP3 for you. Um, just go look into them. They go from anywhere from $100 up to $2,000. That's all you really need. Just type in field recorder in Google or at Guitar Center. There's be a whole bunch of them. But right now, uh, if you don't have the money for it, just use your iPhone or anything that can record. You're good. And chat again. What kind of techniques do you use to make the sounds feel cohesive? Okay, even with the recorder with different mics. That is going to be mainly using uh, panning and also mixing. Um, so even if they're different sounds, it shouldn't matter that much. Like, it's not going to affect the timbre that much because there's so much going on that it should seem like it's in one spot. But again, if you want it to be like one room, you're going to need to have it all going to a reverb and being sent to that. Uh, so it sounds like it's in the same room. But if you're using different microphones um, and want them to sound like it's coming from one person, that all depends on the panning and the mixing. Uh, that's really the most important part. Um, it should all make sense. If there's if you use like a really crappy microphone and it just sounds like garbage and you're using like a good microphone, um, throw away that one sound and then duplicate the other sound that you got from uh, the good microphone and pitch it down a little bit and pan it and it should still have the same type of um, cohesiveness for you. Cool. Next one. All right. How old were I, how old was I when I started working with audio? Um, how did you make it where I am today? Do you have any degrees or certifications or noteworthy awards? Can I say where I went? Is that cool? Okay. Uh, cool, yeah, so I started uh, playing drums professionally when I was 11. So I started at eight from 11, started recording at 16, um, did my first internship at 16 in San Diego. Then I got accepted into this college called Berkeley College of Music, went and graduated from there. Then from there, I moved out here to Los Angeles and I worked in a Grammy winning studio where the chronic was made along with Outkast, Slim Shady, uh, Shakira, all those people. Yeah, that was, that's it. Bruh, what? Bruh? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you guys later. Right on. Cool. Oh. Wow. Cool. Yeah, see you guys later. Thank you. Bye. For more RRF Hangouts, click the subscribe button.